Okay, so good afternoon, ladies and gents. Welcome to the Digi Byte session. This one's on grid references. This is going to be one of the shorter ones we do. So I'm going to quickly walk you through how we can use Digimap for schools for grid references. And we're also very quickly looking lat and long. As Denise says, if you've got any questions, guys, please do just drop them in the chat. More than happy to answer those. So I'm just going to share my screen with you. And hopefully, guys, you can see the Digimap for Schools webpage. So how do we access grid references? So this is very relevant for you guys. If any of you guys are teaching Key Stage 2, 3 and 4, how we use grid references with our pupils. So we'll start with our outline map of the UK. Now, the first thing we can do is overlay the grid references. So I'm going to come to overlay panel here on the left hand side. I'm going to click on GB overlays and then click on British National Grid. And that will overlay the coordinate system that we have for this country. So where we get these grid references from. Uh, now, if you are new to teaching grid references, just explain to you how this works. So the country's been divided up into 100 kilometer squares, as you can see on my map. Those 100 kilometer squares run from 0 to 99 along each axis. And each one of those 100 kilometer grid squares has a unique two letter prefix to tell you where you are in the country. Now, when you do grid references with your pupils, not only do they need to know the four or six, eight or uh, numbers within that grid reference, they also need to know which one of these 100 kilometer grid squares they're in for it to be an accurate grid reference. Simply because if I give you the grid reference 4162, it's in every single one of those grid squares on the screen. So for it to be an accurate grid reference, you need to know which one of these 100 kilometer grid squares we're in. There's two ways we can now view this. So we can zoom in on our map and we get our grid overlaid on our map like so. Now I'm going to quickly cheat and I'm going to type the OS postcode into the search. And when I do that with the overlay on top of my map, you will see that I've got my six figure grid around my map. So I can go along the corridor and up the stairs to find my locations. But I also have the two letter prefix, which says SU. So when I'm in this locality, I need to prefix those grid reference numbers with that abbreviation of SU for it to be an accurate grid reference. So you might not always see this on your map, but we also have a dynamic grid as well. So what I can do now is I can click on the British National Grid. I'm just going to remove that from my map. Now up near it says Map Selector on my map here in the top left hand corner. There's a button next to it. So this will toggle on the dynamic grid for the map. So you can see that I've got my eight figure grid reference. So I can go along the corridor and up the stairs. I have my two letter prefix here where it says SU. So I can also see that. But as I move my map around, I have my dynamic grid around my map so it's always moving that SU marker and adding the lines to my northings there so I know where I am in a location and then again I can zoom in on a locality to find that place or location with my dynamic uh, grid over my map now depending on which scale of map you have on the screen would dictate how many grid references we have here so on a large scale map we can actually pinpoint a 10 figure grid reference and if I zoom my map out I can come out to a two or four or six etc etc and how the grid works as well guys so if I wanted to take a six figure grid here so if I'm going to say 37300 and I'm going to come to 1500 now if I want to make that 10 down to six all I'm going to do is remove the last two digits of each of the set of numbers. So that would mean that I would come to 373155. So there's two uh, kind of grid overlays we have. The one of the overlays and our dynamic grid overlay that you will find on this little toggle button here. Now, as well as being able to find a, a grid on your map, what you can also is pinpoint grid reference locations. So there's a couple of ways we can do this. So the first one we can find under drawing tools. So I go to my drawing tools panel here, I can come to grid ref, click on that, and I can then find a grid reference or a, locase, a location, two, four, six, or ten figure reference, it actually defaults to eight, so let's find the six figure reference for the OSHQ, I'm going to click on the button that says six, click on the OSHQ, and it will give me the six figure reference for a location. So it means you can then start to introduce grid reference skills to your pupils. So can they find the grid references for particular locations? Can they find their house, the school, the shops they go to, et cetera, et cetera, and build their knowledge around grids using this grid reference tool, but then potentially use the overlays as well to find those grid references. Now to remove a grid reference from my map, I'm going to come down to delete by click. Click on my grid reference, it removes it. 
Now, there's also another option as well for finding your grid. So I can come over to the information button here on the left hand panel. I can click on that. And this, as I, as you see here on this box here, as I scan around my map, it will give me the grid reference and the Latin long for a locality. So to capture the coordinate, I'm just going to click on the radio button that says capture coordinate, click on the ordnance survey HQ, shows me where I marked it, then it gives me the grid reference and then the Latin long as well for that location. So I also see here I've got the map date and the projection. So two ways you can do this. One is use this capture coordinate where you find a location or point, or alternatively, you can come in and use the grid reference here as well for the location. Now, what also happens with grid reference as well as Latin long, so grid reference is unique to um, the British Isles. But if I now go and look at a location abroad, so let's go to Berlin in Germany, okay. When I use either of those capture tools this time, we don't obviously have the overlay, or we can do, I'll show you that in a second, for National Grid. But if I come here to six digits and click on the center of Berlin, it will give me the Latin long for that point or location. So I can also find it for localities around globally that use Latin long. And again, I can do the same for the information tool. So let's click on here. So I click capture coordinate click on a location and again it captures my coordinate for my latin long so it's a way to be able to use latin long and both grid references using the same tools and functionality and if i zoom out to show you the extent of the world let's just quickly remove my latin long there and if i come down to overlays on my map again this time I go to reference grids i can click on latitude and longitude and overlay the whole grid for the whole planet so if you're using latin long to find those global locations you can do that so there's a couple of tools there for collecting and finding your coordinates using grid references both latin long and overlays as well for both grid references and latin long and the final way we can show these as well is using the print option so let's go and zoom in on the oshq again so when I print from the service, I can add my Eastings and Northings to my map. So across the top of the icons here, guys, is a print panel. I'm going to click on print. I can give that a title, a place name, et cetera, et cetera. There's a little button I want to click here where it says additions, which is add your grid lines. So when I do that, it will then add the grid lines around my map. So you can use that base map for your grid reference skills. Now, I'm, not, I'm going to cheat and show you. I'm going to go to generate file. OK, and hopefully then what we will see is we'll see a generated file with this grid reference. And of course, it's going to go very slow. Now we're doing this online. But hopefully, guys, you can see on my map, here's my map with my Eastings and Northings all around my map, as well as my scale bar and my North, not north Pointer on the map. And if you do this for the global locations as well, you can overlay Latin long as well. So that one was, well, this is probably going to be one of the shortest Digibytes ones we do because we're looking at uh, grid references and Latin long. So again, if you're struggling with any of these guys, you can come to the help pages, a little question mark at the top. We can look at the overlays in our locations here. Uh, so we can come down to our uh, print maps, our map information, and find our Latin long and our grid reference skills within these. So capture geographical coordinates. As we said, there's your locations for finding locations and your overlays so if you're struggling with those so guys that is a really brief digibyte one it's probably going to be one of the shortest ones we do because there's only a certain amount of skills we can show you using grid references so i'm going to hang around for any questions so if you guys have got any questions please feel free to chat if you come in late and you want me to go for anything again please let me know if not guys i hope you found that useful go and have a look at the website use the help pages and go and look at some of the resources we have as well that are linked to using grid references and Latin long that you can access for free. So guys, if you've got any questions, pop them in chat. If not, I hope you enjoyed the session.